Hey friends, welcome to my channel. Today is a Christmas in July video. I hope you enjoy it. Let's get crafting. These are the supplies we're gonna be using today. Two packs of these tongue depressor sticks, one pack of the regular popsicle sticks, a ribbon that's out of the Dollar Tree, the shovel, and then one of these foam squares. So we're gonna go ahead by taking off the shovel from the dowel, and we're gonna just get off that sticker. I like to sand it whenever I have a problem with it. Drill a hole and then add in a smaller dowel. This is gonna create that crossbar that you see on a cute lantern out in front of someone's house. We're gonna be making this cute, smaller lantern that you can decorate and have in your home for the Christmas season. So once you've got your hole pressed into your foam block, you're gonna go ahead and take some these thick tongue depressor sticks and I'm gonna cut them down to a size that I like. I wanna have a little bit overlap at the top of it so that it can create a greenery box down inside where you don't see the foam square and it just hides it all and looks really pretty at the end with the finishing look. But we're gonna to need to cut six of these sticks for each side. Now the trick about the six is that the sixth one is gonna be hanging over just a little bit. So I'm gonna cut that down the middle of it. And you're gonna see me doing that here where I can lay down the five, they fit perfectly, but that sixth one needs to be cut down to size a little bit to be able to fit. So it's not having a really heavy overlap on it. Then trim around the top to make sure everything's nice and straight and even. Add in some extra glue around the inside so you can make sure it's all nice and secured on there. And then you're gonna do the same thing at the bottom. You're gonna just add some more of the sticks down across the bottom and trim off that sixth one. Now we can leave it there, but I decided to make this look really high end. That's the goal with this project. I decided to take some of the popsicle sticks, cut off the rounded pieces, and then added them around the top and the bottom and the sides to create a really pretty casing around it. There's something about this that made this go from just being a craft project to looking more high end. And I just love the finished look of having the sticks around the sides like this. And I just used a pencil to mark anywhere I needed to and then cut off and then put everything into place. This was a really easy project to do and I just had some music on while I was working on this and it went by pretty quick. Now we're gonna add some hot glue and some E6000 down into our foam square to make sure the dowel is really in there nice and strong. And then I really wanted to make sure that it dried, so I added some more hot glue around the top to make sure that it just encased it all in there so it would have time to really set and do a good job holding everything into place so over time it doesn't fall out. Today for my summer DIY spotlight, I am featuring two more channels that I know you all will love. The very first one is Donna. Right now she's been working on Christmas in July as well and she's got all sorts of goodies and pretty things to go and check out. I'm gonna link her channel as well as Sandra's channel down below in the description box. Both of their channels have beautiful farmhouse DIY decors. I just know that you are gonna enjoy them. So head down there, check them out, give them some love. They're gonna be creating a video for Christmas in July along with me here in this video. Now we're gonna move on to the lantern that's gonna go on top of the dowel. So I'm gonna take five of these popsicle sticks and you can do them whatever length that you want, but my goal was to try to make it a five by five square. So I'm gonna take the five and then I'm gonna lay on another five and then I'm gonna cut off any extra to make it a perfect square so that it has a nice lantern squared look to it. Once I had the popsicle sticks glued one way and glued the other way, I then trimmed down another popsicle stick to be able to create a framed box going around the sides. Once I had three of the sides glued on, I stopped at the fourth one because you're gonna wanna be able to staple that onto your dowel. I put a lot of hot glue on it and then went in with my staple gun and I just stapled down twice. If you're interested in this staple gun, I'll link that down below. I always love to use this in my craft room. If you're new here, you'll see that in other videos, I use it all the time too. So once I had it all stapled on there nice and strong and it wasn't going anywhere, I added on that fourth little wall. 
Now what we're gonna do at this point is we're gonna take the popsicle sticks or the tongue depressor sticks, as long as you can get them, I just cut off right at the top rounded area so that they're nice and long because this is gonna create the walls of our lantern. I'm putting two in each corner, just as you're seeing here, so you're gonna need eight of these. And then once you've got those, you're gonna take a, another box. Now see, I created two of these, one for the base that I stapled into the dowel and then one that I created for the top. It's the exact same steps except for this one, you don't staple it, so you could just go ahead and add that fourth wall. And then you're gonna add some hot glue around the sides where the corners meet up and you're gonna simply slip that right on. Once you've got that on, go ahead and take some popsicle sticks and I'm gonna put the first one crossed the back side of it going from corner to corner because they do have a hard time kind of laying on top of each other and you want this to lay nice and flat. So the first one is under and the second one is over. And you can see here that I put it on three of the sides but I left the back one open so that you can add in your lights or whatever you want to light it up. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take four sticks and we're going to add a whole bunch going up the top because I decided I felt like the top of the lantern still looked a little flat and I wanted it to have some more personality. So we're gonna create almost like a little pyramid at the top. And I just cut those down to where they were about two inches wide. And you can see here that on the very last two, I'm gonna go from corner to corner and I'm gonna cut off the extra. Now remember this is four sticks across. So on the first and the fourth one, you're gonna cut off the corners. And then once you've got that done, you can repeat that four more times because this is going to create that little pyramid at the very top of your lantern and it's going to make it look like it's a real actual lantern, not that you built this out of popsicle sticks and tongue depressor sticks. So once you've got four of them done, I went ahead and glued the sides, added some glue to the back to reinforce it, and then I just kept going around until I got the whole thing built and all glued together. And once you felt that it was nice and strong and dry and secure, you then can go ahead and add some more glue around it and then add that to the very top of your lantern. Make sure it's as centered as possible before you actually make the commitment to gluing it all the way down because that would just be a tragedy if you glued it on a little crooked. So I put mine on and then stood it up and make sure that it was nice and straight. Now at the very top, we're gonna need to seal off the top of it. So I'm gonna just take some more of those sticks and I'm gonna cut them down to size and I'm just gonna simply put them right here up at the top. Now two fit nicely, but there was still a little bit of a gap between it. So I went ahead and cut one down really thin to make sure that it was nice and perfect and fit and sealed the whole top part of my little lantern. Once you have those pieces all on and everything is nice and dry, nice and sturdy, you're then going to move on to something that's really cool. I'm going to take this shower hook ring and you could stop here. You don't have to do this part, but I thought this was so cool to really finish the look. I took this shower curtain ring and I'm going to just drill some holes that are big enough to be able to slip the shower ring into it. Now you're gonna notice that I had a little ball on top there and that is totally cute too, but I ended up taking it off later because I liked the way that the hook looked more and to get the drill, I just took my drill and kept moving around until I made a drill big enough. I just really need to get a bigger drill bit, honestly. Then I took it outside and I gave it a really pretty, almost like an oatmeal color kind of like a tannish color spray paint job all over the whole thing. And I'm gonna go in with some brown paint and just kinda touch the little corners to make it look like it's been weathered sitting outside because I just think this is so pretty. Again, you can skip this step if this is not for you and you don't like distressing, but I do always like a little bit of, you know, distressing to my things. Now I'm gonna take these really cute berries that they come out with at Christmas time at the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna add these into the bottom of my box to really just make this come to life. I feel like at this point it is just so pretty. It's one of the reasons why I went more neutral with the paint color. If you want to add more white flowers, I would recommend maybe painting your lantern red. That could be really cute. And then I added in some pine cones just to really make it look so pretty for Christmas. Now I'm gonna take that ribbon that they had at the Dollar Tree in the fall time, and I'm gonna just simply tie it around the back, make sure it's all on there nice and secure, 
so that way it stays on long term. I always like to make my bows, if you're interested in my bow video, I'll link it down below, but I always like to make my bows first and then I have a piece of twine that I always use to wrap around it so it looks more store made. I touched up my red berries as you saw me doing there and then I'm going to use some of these twinkle lights that they have at the Dollar Tree. I'm going to take some garland to just disguise the box because we don't want to see that and then once it's all wrapped around nice and tight you can turn it on and put it inside your lantern and display for Christmas. If you haven't heard, I host a monthly challenge called the DIY challenge where every single month on the second Friday of the month, I host some type of a theme to encourage you to come and play along and get to know other crafters. These are the rules if you're interested in playing. The playlist goes live on August 14th at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This month, the theme is back to school. So think teacher's gifts or home decor or even just cute things that you can give your kids to bring them into the school spirit since this year is gonna be so different than in the past. Our next DIY has such simple steps and it is just such an impact sitting on a table. It could be so cute. You could also put these together and use them as stocking hangers if you put hooks on the bottom of them. But what we're going to do is we're going to take this wood block that you can get in the craft section from the Dollar Tree and we're going to drill out three holes. Now you can see here that my drill bit is too small so I'm just kind of going around until I make it a little bit bigger the size that I need. And then I'm going to take these Christmas tree ornaments. I love these. I think these are so pretty from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to put three of them on here and glue them down into place. Now, here's a crafter's warning. I wish that I had thought to paint the block first before I glued the trees in, but I got so excited and got ahead of myself and glued them in because I thought they looked so cute that then I had to make the commitment to try to paint around the trees. So obviously paint the wood block first and save yourself the step of having to struggle with painting around the trees. But here I am, I'm just adding in a brown color because I thought it would be really pretty to make this look like a really pretty, almost like a mahogany dark wood. And I'm going back in with a brownish black to just kind of add a little bit more depth and texture to it so it's not just a regular brown color. I like to dry brush on different tints of brown because it really does bring it to life. It makes it look like real wood. Once that was dry, I went in with some white paint around the trees to make it look like snow had fallen right underneath those trees. And then I touched up obviously any spots where I accidentally bumped my tree as well <laughs> because well, I was a little impatient and wanted to glue those trees in, I guess. Sometimes we do that as crafters. I think we get so excited that we don't think things through when we're doing our steps. But here I am, I'm just adding in some white paint, just kind of sporadically across the top of it. And then I'm going to go back in with some glitter and I'm going to put that all over it to stick to the paint so it shimmers just like the Christmas ornaments do. It's such a beautiful thing to be able to sit up on a table, especially by a window if it catches the light and it shines some. I just think that this part is so cute. So once you've got your glitter added, go ahead and add some glitter as well to the very top of the little holes with some hot glue and you'll seal up those holes perfectly and you won't even notice that they used to be an ornament. Now I know a lot of you have been saying you'd love to play along with these DIYs for so long. So my friend Shayna and I over on Instagram have come up with something that does not require you to create a video. All you have to do is create a DIY project from the Dollar Tree and head on over to my account, send me a message and I will give you a private invite into a group of girls who are going to be doing a Dollar Tree DIY tour. If you're interested, come on over to Instagram, send me a message and I'll add you to the group so you can participate and get to hang out with other crafters who love Dollar Tree DIYs just as much as you and I do. For our next DIY, we're going to be taking this sign that I picked up during the summertime and you can use any size that you want, but I really thought this size was perfect. So at the third mark, we're going to measure it into thirds. I'm going to draw a line and then I'm going to go down a line of the middle of that box we just drew 
And then I'm gonna go a third inside that third box. So you can see here I'm creating lines to be able to make an angle because we're gonna turn this into a barn. So I'm just mating up my lines into the center point and then I'm gonna take a craft knife and I'm gonna just score that board and believe it or not, these break so perfectly right on the line if you score them about two or three times and then just snap it. And anything extra that comes off, you're gonna take your scissors and just trim it and you're gonna go all the way around those four corners that we just created so it creates a barn roof. This is just such an easy and cute DIY and you can see here that the angles look just like the top of a barn and you're not gonna to touch the bottom part here, you're gonna leave that alone. Now, I have heard from people that you can wet, wet the back of these and they should be able to peel off, but I wanted to show you all that I'm not a fan of this. <laughs> I was having the hardest time trying to peel this off and I felt like it was super messy. So what I like to do is I like to either put a piece of foam core on the back side or to make this look more high end, you can put a piece of fabric on the back of it and glue that into place. And I just went with a really pretty cream and blue ticking stripe. I thought this would look really nice. Once that's all glued on the back, go ahead and flip it over and give it a coat of barn red. I went ahead and went with almost like a cherry red because I thought this would just be so bright and pretty for Christmas. Once I had the whole thing painted all the way over with one coat of paint, I went ahead and moved on creating the roof. Now the roof can be a little bit trickier, but really all you're doing is just following the cut lines of the roof. So first I'm gonna cut it at an angle. I'm gonna place it on there and then I'm gonna stick another one underneath it to be able to create that mitered corner that we want at the top. And you're just gonna take your time on this part, making your cut lines with your pencil marks. And then once you've got those, you're gonna trim off the sides. Now I laid them down and I also drew a little pencil line to know where to cut. Now you can see at this point I've got the top of my roof and then I'm going to come around to the side and I'm going to also create the exact same steps. I'm going to sneak a stick underneath there, draw my little pencil line once I've got it in place and then cut off the extra that I don't want where I drew my line. So that way all of the corners are gonna match up perfectly. Then once you've got everything all cut, you can go ahead and take your hot glue and glue everything down into place. Now this is the fun part about this. You could put this roof on however you want. This is just particularly how I did it, but there's so many fun things you can do with this roof and you can go with a brown or a white. I decided to go ahead and paint mine white and you'll see that in a second. But first we're going to go down to the middle of the board. I decided to do a line across it just like you would see on a barn. And now we're going to create the doors. So I have the three sticks that are just basically the length of a popsicle stick and I cut off the rounded pieces. And then I put one down the middle. And then I'm creating again those little corner mark offs where I know I need to be able to make things fit down inside the corners. And then I did one and I took another and I made this one so it would be cut in half so everything laid flat on my sign. I thought this would just be so high end looking by taking the time to cut these down. And then I just kept playing with it. Popsicle sticks are so affordable so that if you make a mistake, you can just try it again until you get it right. And then once I got one side done, I actually kind of got the groove of it and I was going even faster on the second side. So this is definitely something that once you try it once, you'll learn it really easy and then be able to move forward really quickly. Once I had my door all on, I went ahead and took some of this garland and I'm gonna just sneak it out because unraveling this whole thing is a beast. <laughs> it makes a big mess. And then I'm gonna give it a haircut. I love to trim this down because it goes from looking kind of chintzy to looking high end. So <laughs> this is a garland from the Dollar Tree. It turns into just such a darling small wreath. And then I'm gonna add that to the top of my barn in just a second. But here's where I'm going back in with the white paint and I'm just gonna paint it all white. And then I'm gonna come in with my wreath and I'm gonna glue that up at the top to add that Christmas touch to it. I thought this was so cute for that farmhouse Christmas decor. And then this ornament is such a hot ticket. They bring it back yearly at the Dollar Tree because it's so stinking cute. 
So I'm gonna take off the Merry Christmas sign at the bottom. I'm gonna add some E6000 and some hot glue and then just stick that right underneath the wreath. I thought this was so adorable. I don't know what it is about this little Christmas ornament sign that, I don't know, I just thought it was so cute. And then to add that farmhouse touch, I'm gonna add a gingham ribbon, black and white, up at the top, glue it in place to cover those holes, and then you're ready to display it somewhere cute in your home for Christmas. Leave a comment down below to let me know what you think of the DIYs in this video today. I hope you enjoyed them. Don't forget to go and visit Sandra and Donna and give them some love and go and tell them that I sent you. And if you're new here to my channel, coming over from their channels or you found me by random, welcome. My name is Heidi and I hope you click the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Thanks so much for stopping by and until the next episode, bye friends.